How's it going everyone? This is Renee with Neptune Cigars. We are back on day three of the PCA 2024 in Las Vegas. I have the privilege of sitting here with Mr. Nick Melillo of Foundation Cigars. This man loves Nicaragua. This man loves Connecticut. This man loves the Ice Age. <laughs> Nick, you, were there for, you were there for that. <laughs> how are you, sir? Good to see you, Renee. Very good, good to, to see, see you. you. So, day three, how's the show going for you all so far? Going really well. You know, it's been uh, nonstop. It's nice uh, that we have some time when there's a little mm -hmm. lull here on, on day three. So we yeah. can, we I'm, can I'm chat. Getting, I'm starting to feel it. You know, I'm, I can only imagine how you feel. <laughs> it's, you know, it's long. Tw it's like 12 to 14 hour days. And uh, it's... Uh, Talking, walking. just <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, set up. I like to be really hands on. Mm -hmm. You know, our crew comes in early. It's kind of a nice team building moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we all get here set up and we tear down to and i'm in the trenches trenches with everybody right. but uh it's good mm -hmm. it's good we put a lot into the show you know it's the one time where we see a lot of our our friends and retailers so we really like to represent mm -hmm. you know where we're at as a company at the show so yeah um yeah you still have a voice um, I'm slow. I usually get sick after these shows. Yeah. It's, it's more oh. because of the Vegas climate, man. It's rough. It's, yeah. uh, you know, I'm not used to it, it being so dry. You Same know? here. You know, yeah, we're, yeah. yeah, Florida. We're Miami. Imagine that. Yeah. It's like about as opposite as you can get. And I'm in Connecticut, Nicaragua. I mean, the humidity is usually above, you know, 65% all the time. Mm -hmm. Here it's like 15, 20% or something ridiculous. But So what about uh, yeah. New Orleans next year? There'll be some humidity there. That's going to be, yeah, uh, yeah more familiar. You know, we launched in New Orleans in 2015. Mm. So it's kind of ironic because it's our 10 year anniversary um, right. for the next show. So it will be, you know, it's interesting to be back in, in New Orleans yeah. 10 years later. That's cool. Yeah. So I brought up the Ice Age a little uh, yeah. a second ago. I was fortunate enough to see your presentation on Friday. Uh, unfortunately, so I don't think happy. it's yeah. it's nothing that the general public I think will be able to see. But uh, yeah. I know someone was asking for your slides just because they were so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they taped it or not. I, I didn't even ask the PCA, but I'm glad yeah. you got to mm -hmm. to see it. I hope it was all right. Um, I think there's something to be said about the face of a brand yeah. talking or speaking so passionately yeah. about the product. Because so many people are, like you said, in the trenches, behind the scenes, yeah. you know, they might send someone else to do a presentation, but right. you are there. You are Nick Aragua. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good. I tried to do it in a way that I'm not reading mm -hmm. from a, like the teleprompter or reading from notes. I, I use the slides as sort of a prompt. Sure. But if you mm -hmm. notice, the, the slides didn't have a lot of content right. on them because, mostly. yeah, I want to kind of use it as a, a pivot point to really have a conversation like it create it uh, the environment like we're talking now mm -hmm. and sometimes that's tough to do in front of a thousand people but yeah. that's the approach i try to take so it seems more personable and people can connect to it more absolutely which is it's in, it's intimidating you know talking is it and, fun for you though do you are you like, it is once you if i don't think about it mm -hmm. and uh, yeah i mean it's nice to share you know, something that I'm so passionate about and have been studying for so many years. Yeah. And then that was the first time I put it into more of a formal kind of presentation style. So once I get into it, I think the first five minutes, mm -hmm. you know, it takes it me. To flow. Yeah. <laughs> after the first five minutes, you know, I checked in about halfway through mm -hmm. and I looked out into the crowd and I saw everybody engaged. So I was, yeah. I, I said, all right, I'm, I'm on the right track, you know, keep going wow, with dude, it. You, so. That was a, a slam dunk, man. I mean, yeah. Out of the park. Good. Yeah, it's interesting to learn, you know, just the meaning of Connecticut, the long tidal river. Mm -hmm. I think even that, what people learn, you know, when I learned it for the first time, it just, uh, it just imparts a lot of awareness yeah. of, uh, I've always been that, that kid, you know, uh, my mom early on, like, why is this? Why is that? I was asking a million questions. So I always like to, you know, get into the etymology, why things are the yeah. way and, you know, it's because of that river which makes Connecticut tobacco so amazing. So mm -hmm. I was hoping I imparted that on, on the group. One of the slides had the original spelling of it, right? Yeah. I, I had to Winnetica. read it like three times yeah. and I was like, oh, it's yeah. Connecticut. That's the Mohegan uh, 
the way. Yeah, Q U. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. it was you uh, the spelling yeah. uh, originally, but uh, it's interesting that those names, certain names, were kept. Mm -hmm. You know, indigenous names, and then you have New England names. Yeah, uh, it's fascinating. So I do want to ask you something I wanted to ask you that day, and I actually was going to raise my hand, and then they said, no more questions. Um, I have a friend who swears that Ecuadorian Connecticut is more flavorful, more blah, 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 than USA Connecticut. And then you said that you are going to, you know, most manufacturers are going to be migrating, if not already, will be to Ecuadorian. Uh, it's, so. uh, it's, I would say 99% of it is in Ecuador. Yeah, okay. Yeah, shade. So that said, yeah. though, what do you, do you agree with that? Do you think that it might, what, what are the traits of each? Um, so I, I would say the Connecticut actually had, it's, it, it's actually characteristically a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, um, the cellular structure of the leaf compared to Ecuador. Um, I think there's a little bit more flavor in the Connecticut coming out of the valley. Yeah. The shade variants, it, it had more of a yellowish than like a gold. The Ecuador really has this golden yep. color. And it's actually in Ecuador, there's only certain farms in Ecuador that actually produce the golden color. A lot of them actually produce a much darker, more cafe right. type color, actually more yeah. You know this this, like this this color um, because they don't they get more sun exposure. There's certain farms that get less sun exposure mm -hmm. in Ecuador, and it comes out golden. Um, I think the Connecticut is definitely a little bit more uh, flavorful, a little bit more body. Yeah. It did have a little bit more of a, a natural bitterness in a good way. Yeah, yep, yep. Um, but. It, it, for me, it was always interesting that the market didn't really, it didn't really say, "Hey, I don't like these cigars. I'm not buying these mm -hmm. cigars." They, this shift happened, you know, since the late '80s till now, and the market didn't really react in a way uh, where they're like, I, I, "I don't like these. The I'm people, not smoking these half, anymore." Like half the people probably didn't notice. Half the people probably didn't notice. Yeah, and I, I don't think that's the, can be the case for all, like broad leaf, oh, the right. Cuban seed, yeah. because it's a completely different seed variety, and the soil in Connecticut, you can't replicate that. Yeah. Whereas the Connecticut shade, because of the nature of it being so thin, and more of a, a milder, neutral style tobacco, mm -hmm. I'm speaking in general here, sure. you know, that, that change was, able to be made a little more adaptable yeah but if you if you grow broadleaf seed in pennsylvania to me it doesn't have the natural sweetness it doesn't have the earthiness pennsylvania broadleaf is a lot more rustic right uh, again not bad i i never you know people say oh what's better to i don't see tobaccos as better That's, or worse yeah. mm -hmm. what makes tobaccos better or worse is your growing practices in the field, your quality, your selection, your fermentation. That's, for me, what makes tobaccos better or worse as far as quality. But different seeds grow in different areas. It's just more different characteristics of flavor. Yeah. They're different ingredients. Mm -hmm. So it all depends on what you like or what you're trying to accomplish. But, you know, they've been trying to grow broadleaf in Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough, man. Totally different, you know, volcanic soil compared to in Connecticut River Valley. When you see the soil, it's so sandy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you some of these farms, you're almost, you do look like you're at the beach almost because it's, it's yeah. so sandy. Yeah. But that provides um, the wa water filtration, mm -hmm. right? So there's not as much clay. The clay is about is much deeper. So the water is passing through the sand before it gets down to the clay and the tobacco plant, the roots are following the water. Mm -hmm. So it, the roots go deep before it latches onto the clay and that produces sweeter, you know, uh, yeah, mean, traits, flavorful yeah. tobacco. Wow. Yeah. I could listen to you talk all day about this stuff, man. You know, I try, <laughs> I, I, hope, I try not to, you know, go too much, but mm -hmm. You know, sometimes... Uh, no, I think it's a welcome uh, addition to the industry because, like I was saying, you know, there's, there are cigar nerds out there that love dissecting what we smoke. You know, there's more casual people, but then there's people that are yeah. passionate and they, they treat it as either a hobby or even a lifestyle. Yeah. You know? But, yeah, we're here at PCA, so why don't we talk about some new stuff? Yeah, sure. 
Um, so we're releasing this year is the, the new Wise Man. Mm -hmm. um, I made a really difficult decision to, um, to uh, uh, now, now I lost the word. Well, Wednesday is not gonna be available any longer. I've heard. Um, and also the Wise Man. So the Wednesday I launched in 2015, you know, at the time, nobody knew really who I was or who Foundation was in 2015, except for the hardcore smokers. Um, and that's what the Wawense was for. Um, over the past 10 years, it just really hasn't grown like our, our other brands. Mm -hmm. It's obviously, I knew it was a mouthful um, to pronounce. You attribute that. But I wanted to be true to Nicaragua with that product um, and, and hence, you know, well, Wednesday. But it, it, it's definitely a difficult one. So I made a difficult decision. Um, so if you like well, Wednesday, get them while you can because I think I have uh, a few boxes. I'm stashing, I got like 50 boxes of each in my personal stash. Yeah. Um, so we're coming out with the new Wise Man. I had the opportunity to work with Pepin Garcia, with Jaime, my father. Uh, I couldn't pass that opportunity up. And I've known Pepin for 20 plus years. He's, uh, he's an incredible tobacco man. So we released the Wise Man Corojo. This is all Nicaraguan. It's com completely different blends than the one Wednesday or Wise Man. Which is um, what I get asked all the time. Is it gonna yeah. change the blend? It, yeah, like they're that. completely different tobaccos. Are they, you know, are they Cuban seed tobaccos grown in Nicaragua? Yes, that's similar. But they're different seed, seed varieties and they're grown on different farms. Um, so this, this uses tobacco from Condega, Jalapa and Esteli in the fillers. Right. Two binders, Esteli and Jalapa and then a Nicaraguan grown Corojo. Okay. Um, to me, it's a nice, you know, medium. Mm -hmm. to, my, to me, it's for a novice smoker and also for an experienced smoker. Yeah. Yeah, this is good uh, for either breakfast or after dinner. Yeah. Either one. Yeah, still a lot of flavor. The jalapa's nice because it gives it that, like, little, like, the, the sweet aftertaste, you know? That yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's nice. Yeah, I love jalapa because mm -hmm. it adds that, that, that sweetness, and then you add the Corojo seed, and yeah. mm -hmm. I'm... Uh, I'm in heaven. Yeah. Um, and then we, we have the Maduro version, which, you know, I always like to have a lighter and a darker version. You know, from working the store, you have so Lotto many different store, customers yeah. that come through the door. Some people smoke only Maduros, some only smoke lighter wrappers, some smoke both, like yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a San Andreas uh, Maduro. The filler is similar, it's Condega Jalapa. Uh, Esteli, double binder, but the filler is tweaked. It has a heavier um, uh, amount of viso and ligero, um, so it gives it a little bit more richness and, yeah. and body. Nice. Yeah. So four sizes, the Corona, Robusto, Toro, and double Corona. Right. We sell a crazy amount of uh, double Coronas for its... Yeah, that size I, is interesting. I mean, it's interesting. You know, because that it's a if it's you have kinda, the time, it's a little polarizing because it's in the same way as a Churchill would be. You know, uh, it's a, you need the time for it. Yeah, it's <laughs> a it's a fifty four. So we do a seven by fifty four. Yeah, the Toros is six by fifty two. Robusto five and a half by fifty, and the Corona. It's really a Corona Gorda. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a five by forty eight. Um, I like that. How you doing, Marvin? <laughs> um, so, so we have these two. Uh, we also have the Axum. Mm -hmm. um, so this might look familiar to yes. certain people. Yes. So this is the Matapa. Uh, you know, we had a trademark issue with the imagery of Matapa. As you know, in this industry, trademarks are. Thank God, I haven't had many. You know, yeah. any trademark issues up till present. But you know, at the beginning of a brand, I said I don't want to waste time dealing with trademarks and mm -hmm. all that legal you know if the brand was five years old that would be a different story but um, so so yes axum um, axum originally matapa um, same blend abano uh, i'm sorry sumatra ecuador sumatra ecuador to me has a very unique pr flavor profile it also has a bit of a natural bitterness to it not in a bad way uh -huh. so i use the connecticut broadleaf binder 
this broadleaf is the broadleaf that comes from the tabernacle production. Really? So it's all the, uh, the tobacco that doesn't pass as wrapper gets passed to binder. Gotcha. The only difference is it's not as aesthetically pleasing to pass as, as wrapper. Um, it really makes the blend for me because mm -hmm. it balances out any of that natural bitterness. And it's, I've been smoking through these. They're, interestingly enough, the Claro, we have a Claro and a Maduro mm -hmm. version, um, 10 count boxes. This is definitely a, a fuller bodied, yeah. richer smoke, but this comes from the original Matapa production. So I, these were all made in September and October. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so why the name change? So, you know, we had an issue with um, the Matampa imagery. Uh, Ruben Darío is a very important uh, Nicaraguan historical figure. And unfortunately, I didn't want to go through the, the hassle of having to deal with, uh, you know, in this industry, trademarking is insane. Yeah. I mean, there's so many names trademarked. Thank God we haven't had many issues over the past 10 years. So I decided instead of having to deal with all that is to just move forward and, yeah. Um, so what's the meaning behind Axum? Axum is the uh, housing of the Ark of the Covenant. So it's where uh, the Ethiopians claim to possess the Ark of the Covenant. Um, the image on the box is Haile Selassie's father, uh, who's the image behind you here, who's on the tabernacle box. Okay. So. Uh, his name is Ross McKennan. So this is the, he was the governor of Oxa. Wow. Um, so, you know, my fascination with uh, the Ark of the Covenant <laughs> is, uh, we can go it's on. Like every for, release, every release you put out, you got to do research on. You know, <laughs> Some you know, hopefully that's what I kind of, you know, you could take it to different levels. Mm -hmm. I try to make it so it's, the, the brands are appealing, you know, from a uh, aesthetic, you know, I, I, I'm just trying to complement the blends with imagery and packaging that I'm passionate about. You know, I'm passionate. It all starts with the blends. It all starts with the tobacco. Mm -hmm. That's always the foundation. Yeah. Um, pun but, intended. Yeah, pun intended. <laughs> but the imagery is, oh, you know, I want to do things that I'm passionate about, you know, so, you know, I, I don't want it to be a gimmick or, sure. you, know, you know, the gimmicks have their place, but. Why well, have just a great cigar when you can have a great cigar with a great packaging and story? Yeah. You know? So, you know, Nicaragua is my passion also, but then also, you know, this, I've always been fascinated with uh, the Ark of the Covenant and uh, <laughs> Ethiopia's claim to actually possess it, uh, <laughs> which is fascinating to me. So, that yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So this Oxum is, is shipping now. Um, the wise men should start shipping mid to end of April. Okay. Um, then we're also re-releasing on a, a yearly with uh, the Knight Commander mm -hmm. is a yearly release. Um, we're actually donating on our sides. All the proceeds from the Knight Commander go directly to charity. So That's after great. we pay our, our, our reps, after we pay our shipping and everything, all the profits go right to, uh, right to charity. This is six and three quarter by 52 Perfecto. Mm -hmm. um, I was knighted by the Ethiopian crown. I was given the title Knight Commander, <laughs> um, hence the name. And I wanted to be able to, to give back. Well, and what can you disclose about the blend itself? How does so, it smoke? Yeah, so the blend is, is based on the, ta when I blended Tabernacle, I had seven blends. To be honest with you, I think all but one could have passed really? to make it in the box. So this is one of those seven blends. Um, so it's similar to the taberna Tabernacle, but more refined. Okay. Um, these age for about a year before they're actually packed and shipped. Okay. Um, so they're a little bit more uh, refined, elegante, a little more elegant, would it not smoke, as rustic. Would it smoke any way similar to like the Senator? Um, so the, they we're also re-releasing this Sinecher um, this fall also. Um, very different as far as the, the blend. So this is Habano Ecuador. Um, this is uh, Connecticut Broadleaf. Yeah. Um, and then we use different filler and, and binder combinations on, on both. Similar size. The shape and stuff. Is yeah, kind of, so yeah. yeah. Six, by, six and three quarter by 52. I just really like that size for a special, you know, these are special celebratory cigars. These mm -hmm. are special 
occasion cigars. Uh, this is not an everyday. Yeah. And I, I, for some reason, I love those perfectos. I'm a big perfecto guy. So I'm gonna throw a little curveball at you. Yeah, please. I, I don't know if you want to disclose this or not, but yeah. What makes these two in particular the price point that they are? So the aging time of the tobaccos and then the aging time of um, how long we let them sit. So both of these age a year beforehand. All of the filler tobaccos are three plus aged, uh, bale aged. Nice. So, you know, one of the ways of aging tobacco is fermentation, of course, but then in the bale, um, you know, you know when you take a piece of meat off of the off of the the stove and you let it sit in the hot plate mm -hmm. to give it its last little touch. Yeah. You don't want to take it too far. Yeah. On the stove because then if you put it on the hot, then you'll overcook it. So it's kind of similar in that in the bale curing. You take it out of fermentation a little bit earlier and then you age it over time in the bales for slow age. Um, also, is this this one in particular too is the charity aspect yeah. um, so do you want us to talk about who the charity is yeah so the, the, all the proceeds go to the Royal Ethiopian Trust um, which I formed with the grandson of Haile Selassie he's the the uh, prince of the Ethiopian Crown Council so he's the grandson of the gentleman on the tabernacle box right um, I've in the past three years have built a relationship with him, which is an honor of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So we formed the Royal Ethiopian Trust to focus on education and entrepreneurship uh, programs. Right. So yes. those are going right into uh, educational programs. That's great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so anything else you want to add about upcoming products? Is this it for t uh, this year or do you expect any surprises? This is, right now year? you might see a 10 year anniversary coming uh, at some point. Yeah. Um, so fall is when our, uh, our 10 year anniversary would officially be. So you might see something. Have you ever told anyone this yet? No. <laughs> uh, I've mentioned 10 year anniversary, but I have not said fall. Okay. Yes. There's hope. So, mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to focus on, you know, definitely on the wise man, Axum, you know, in, yeah. in, in building these new brands. So I want to make a comment on the uh, the new Charter Oaks. Yes. When they first arrived. Yes. Maybe perhaps because of the original line being such a budget friendly stick. Yeah. People saw this one. Yeah. It's, like it's double the price. Like, yeah. You know, what what exactly? Yeah. Why? You know? Yeah. And it, it might have uh, it might have had a, a hard beginning maybe the first couple of weeks yes but all of a sudden we cannot keep them in stock yeah so again another special cigar charter oak is the every that's what my grandfathers would have smoked every day mm -hmm. the charter oak especials the pegnatero pasquale, pasquale yep. that would have been their special smoke that would have been their weekend smoke that would have been their you can smoke it every day don't sure. get me wrong yeah, yeah. but that it's completely different blend yeah, as filler tobaccos. Yeah. The Charter Oak, you know, the Charter Oak use more of Seiko tobaccos from the bottom priming. Yeah. The plant yields a lot more of that priming. Mm -hmm. So hence it's at a better price, much better price sure. point yeah. because all of the market is kind of driving towards Viso Ligero, the heavier, uh, heavier leaves. Yeah. Now yeah. Seikos are definitely milder. Mm -hmm. um, but you, if you get access to the good stuff, there's still tons of flavor. No, for sure. Yeah. The the, the Maduro is like a chocolate bar, yeah. <laughs> and the Connecticut yeah. is, is just awesome. I mean, I'm I'm actually very picky with Connecticut's myself. You know, like the shade variety, yeah. Yeah. and that one is uh, customers also can't get enough. Yeah, of like yeah. That, that new much. that new one, it's got that shade has a little bit more. To it. And another thing that surprised me a bit, because I'm, I'm a hardcore Maduro guy. I love Broadleaf. I love Mexican San Andres. Yeah. So with the original Metapa and then with the Axum again, the Claro is unbelievable. I prefer it over the Scuro. I've been smoking Claro. I smoked like two boxes of Robusto Claros just before the show. Yeah. And I've been smoking Olmec Claros oh, yeah. like, like yeah. mad. Yeah. Yeah. How are we doing? You get more Olmecs? Olmec, yeah. I All think right. we finally we're starting to finally trickling back in. Yeah, because... we were like thirteen thousand boxes back ordered, mm -hmm. um, and we're just starting to really have steady, yeah. steady flow. So no, I think things this, are going. This back. month we should be mm -hmm. getting Slowly caught up surely. on back orders and 
Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, man. Well, Nick, I think uh, we might be closing up now, but I do want to end on an open-ended question. Yes. All right, so I've been asking everyone this. Next year, as you know, we're like we mentioned, we're going to New Orleans, uh, no more Vegas. So with the word change on your mind, what would you change about the cigar industry if you had the opportunity to? Oh, man. Oh, man. What would I change about the cigar industry? This is your chance if to I... play God. Holy cow. Um... So just the industry in general? Yeah. It's a very vague, open-ended question. It could be big or small. Elaborate as much as you want. Um, I think I would say to be, you know, more welcoming to um, new people into our industry. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's, that's crucial. Um, I think it's very intimidating for new people coming into our industry. And I think some of the hardcore geeky guys mm -hmm. sometimes get a little too clicky. Uh, yeah, sometimes. I was thinking the word click too. You know, and it's intimidating for people. So I, I would definitely kind of ch change that and just, you know, have people be much more open to welcoming new people. Mm -hmm. um, I think you guys do an amazing job of oh. welcoming, you know, new people into the industry. But, you Thank know, you. some, 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 you know, some of the geeks get a, a little too geeky. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, a bit overwhelming, I think, for new people. It's the same way for me in, with, like, wine. I don't know wine well. Right. So if I go into a store, you know, it's overwhelming. So You want to be able to have some guidance. It's so crucial and, yeah. to have guidance. Right. And I think that's why, you know, Neptune is so successful is because you guys are guiding people. And that's what a true tobacconist is supposed to do. Um Unfortunately, I don't think that's always widespread in, in yeah. certain areas. Yeah. I love that answer. I hope I'm not too controversial. No. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Guys, no more gatekeeping, okay? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we need peop new people. Mm -hmm. It's so crucial for new people to learn about the art of handmade cigars. So. I, I do feel like there's a, a much younger demographic starting to, just to smoke nowadays, too. Yeah. You yeah. know, so. I mean, we don't grow too much as an industry, so... Yeah. We got to keep the torch torch burning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nick, pleasure. thank you so All much right. for your time. My you pleasure. guys heard it here first. Please stay tuned for everything coming your way from Foundation Cigars in 2024, available at neptunecigar.com. Thank you guys for watching. See you next year.